Hi, this is Math 1428, Remote Delivery for May 1st, 2020. Content lecture over section 7.3 in your textbook covering hyperbolas. Use these tools to make your learning rich. In The Lord of the Rings, the first book, The Hobbit, a character says, So comes snow after fire, and even dragons have their endings. One day, these days, the era of COVID-19 will be a memory for us. But today, our shared opportunity is to strive, to teach and learn, to earn our grades, and continue our educational pursuits unabated, in spite of the challenges. Make our legacy one of accomplishment, of triumph over adversity. Fill each unforgiving moment with 60 seconds of full-out sprint. Finish and finish strong. That's what champions do. Previously, we've talked about the parabola, the circle, and ellipse. Today, we talk about the hyperbola. And as you can see, there will be two branches. And these are our learning objectives. A hyperbola is a set of all points in a plane, so it is a plane figure, for which the absolute value of the difference of the distances between two fixed points called foci, here's a focus, and here's a focus, here's a focus, and here's a focus. You have two of these, just like in the ellipse, is a constant. But instead of, with the ellipse, the sum of the distances of a point on the ellipse uh, form the conic section in the plane. Here, what happens is the difference is a constant. So instead of getting an oval, you get a figure that looks like this, where the difference between D2 and D1 in this picture is a constant. The midpoint of the segment between the foci is called the center. So the midpoint is there or there, and that is called the center of the hyperbola. Now, if we use the distance formula and uh, do the calculations, we find that there are two of these that will, uh, will emerge uh, that are uh, having what we call a transverse axis uh, parallel to the coordinate axes. One uh, having a transverse horizontal axis, that means this axis, the one through the center N, the foci, could be horizontal, and down here it is going to be vertical, similar to what we saw with the ellipse. And the standard form is we can convert one that looks like this with a horizontal transverse uh, axis and having a center of 0, 0, we can convert it into the form x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Now the way you know this is a horizontal transverse axis is that the one that is positive, you see one is negative and one is positive, the one that is positive is the transverse axis. We have things that are called vertices. This ver is one vertex. This is another one vertex. And so those are, those are at minus a comma zero and a comma zero. The foci are here. Notice that they're inside the conic section. At minus c zero and c zero. And now, different than the ellipse, this is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Again, in both of these examples, we're centered at the origin. Similarly, if the y squared term is positive, again, you see you have a minus here, it's going to have a vertical transverse axis. So the vertices are going to be at 0a and 0 minus a. Again, the foci are going to be inside the conic section. And again, in contrast to the ellipse, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared.
To graph a hyperbola with a horizontal transverse axis, we begin by graphing two lines. This is y is equal to minus b over ax, and y is equal to pos plus positive b over 2x. And so you see we have these two dotted lines. Now these are the limits that the curve gets close to whenever you go way out here. It gets closer and closer to that curve, and coming down here, it gets closer and closer to this curve. Similarly over here. We get closer and closer to this line, and down here we get closer and closer to this line. These are called the asymptotes of the hyperbola. And um, so as the absolute value of x gets larger and larger over here, or over here, the graph gets closer and closer to the asymptotes. So here's an example. Uh, find an equation of a hyperbola that has vertices 0, minus 4, and 0, 4, and foci at 0, comma, minus 6, and 0, comma, 6. Well, first of all, if these are the vertices, you know you have a vertical, up and down, transverse axis, and that means this is y squared over some number squared. So we, ha we have that form. We also know that a is the distance from the center to the vertices. So A is going to be 4, and C is the distance from the center to the foci. So C is going to be 6. We have to find B squared, but we know that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So we can find out that B squared is equal to 20. So we know everything we need to know. This was centered at 0, 0. We knew that because the midpoint of the um, foci is the center. So we know the transverse axis is vertical. We can just write the equation, and this is the answer. And here's a problem that you can try. You know what to do and when to do it. Here's another example. <clears throat> so we have a hyperbola given by this equation. You're to find the vertices, the foci, and the asymptotes, and then graph the hyperbola. Well, this is not in standard form because we need to have a 1 here to have it in standard form. So we divide all the way through by 144, and when we do those calculations, we get this is in standard form. And if we realize that 16 is 4 squared and 9 is 3 squared, we can write it this way in standard form. So we know this is centered at 0, 0, has a horizontal transverse axis, and we know um, that the vertices are going to be at minus 4, comma 0, and 4, comma 0. We also know that uh, b squared is, uh, is 9, so all we have to do is find c, and so c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. We take the square root and we get 5. That means that the foci are at minus 5, 0, and 5, 0. The asymptotes I find at this way, minus b over ax and b over ax, so I get these lines. So I can draw the dotted lines, I can plot the vertices, I can plot the foci, and I can draw the curve. There is an app, but you most people don't have that, and downloading it might be a challenge. But to graph this on the graphing calculators that we've been using, you solve for y first, and you graph the top and bottom halves. So the first graph would be the top half, this part, and this part, and the other graph would be the bottom, and you graph them on the same axis. Um, you can perfect your understanding by trying this exercise. You know what to do and when to do it. Uh, we also could think about, oh, we can move the center away from 0, 0 and move it to HK. Now notice that we're still having the transverse axis parallel to the x-axis or parallel to the y-axis, and we get these results. So whenever we have a transverse axis horizontal, it is x minus h whole squared over a squared minus y minus k whole squared over b squared equals 1. Again, this is centered at h, k, and c squared still equals a squared plus b squared. Similarly, if we have a transverse 
vertical axis, we'll have y minus k whole squared over a squared minus x minus h whole squared over b squared is equal to 1. And c squared still equals a squared plus b squared. So here is a hyperbola given by this. We're to find the center of the vertices, the foci, and the asymptotes, and then draw the graph. Well, we have to get this into the standard form, so we're going to have to complete the square. The easiest way to complete the square is by factoring out the 4 of the terms having a y and a uh, negative 1 out of the terms containing the x. We complete the square here and complete the square here. So what we get is this is 4 times y plus 3 whole squared minus x minus 2 whole squared equals 4 and we divide by 1 to get it into standard form. And that means that the center is 2 comma minus 3. Note that the x and y are matched up. A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 2. So the transverse axis is vertical because the, uh, the, the Y is positive. And we know where the centers are. We also know the vertices. So these are the vertices. We can find the points of the foci. We can calculate the asymptotes. Notice that now the line goes through HK, not through 0, 0. So you can sketch the asymptotes, the vertices, the foci, and sketch the curve. Again, this can be done with your calculator, and here you know what to do and when to do it. There are important applications of hyperbolas. Uh, one thing is uh, they're used in architecture, uh, cross sections of planetariums, amphitheaters, or even a cooling tower for a steam or nuclear plant. Uh, my son lives near Three Mile Island, and uh, I've seen these many times from a plane. You see, this is the shape of a hyperbola. This is the shape of a hyperbola. Another application is long-range navigation system called LORAN. Uh, the system uses uh, tracking uh, stations. So you see it gets a signal from two traffic uh, tracking stations here. And the first one comes in and it says, oh, what was the time it took to get there? And what was the time it took for that to get here? And the difference defines a hyperbola. And in this case, for those uh, uh, two, uh, it's going to be the um, um, one of them. And let's just say it's the red. But then there's a third tracking station, and you'll compare it with that, and you'll get the blue. The two hyperbolas intersect in a point. That's where the ship is. Clever, actually. Uh, here's a summary chart, which is good, uh, because it reminds us that, g, if uh, one variable is squared, it's a parabola. If two variables are squared, it is an ellipse or a circle. If the coefficients of the x squared and y squared are the same, it will be a circle. If they're different, it's going to be an ellipse. And if you have a minus sign in between, it's going to be a hyperbola. Now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself.